Yes, thank you very much and welcome to my presentation. You've already seen the title. Just a few words about me. I'm a student from Germany. Um, I got into Julia quite fresh. I decided to use Julia to implement uh, things for my thesis where I'm doing electronic design automation and verification of circuits for quantum computers, but maybe we see each other for that at Julia Con 24. Let's see how it goes. Uh, right now, we're gonna take like a step step back we're not going to be like super technical the second part of my talk will be how to formulate a mathematical optimization problem from the question how to choose your programming language or language we would want to learn um, let's see next so I will introduce the topics and uh, what I will be talking about then we'll be looking at learning languages because in order to be productive in a programming language, you also should be able to learn it. And for this, I will show you like how similar is learning a spoken language to a programming language when we define specific criteria to which we like want to evaluate the problem and see which language we want to learn. And if we want to have like linear programs, we have like variables, constraints, and objectives. And uh, I will guide you along with like screenshots of a Pluto notebook, which is also published in the slides. Like at the end, you can share the, uh, scan the QR code. And there's some take home problems where you will get to learn Julia notebooks better. And we will hopefully be able to like um, have some surveys. Also, uh, my plan is to go to all of the sponsors soon that anybody interested and ask you like how what is interesting for you and what are your criteria for the pr uh, programming languages so we can see like maybe big p companies have different uh, ones than me because I have just very little time, no money and just one p person working but I can decide completely free what language I use and build my own stack. Maybe big industry is different, we can talk about that. Please come to me afterwards and discuss these things. So um, we have everything I said, they're just summarized again. Uh, the goal of this talk is for you to maybe try this at home as well. Maybe some of you write Julia, others do, do not. Maybe all of you do, I'm not sure. And uh, if you want, you should try to use solving more optimization problems because they're widely applicable. Um, Finding the correct tools is a never-ending quest for me as a programmer and as a nerd because I like spending uh, time with that, so I've been investing time in writing my own editor, the way it should work, like I now use Vim and Emacs, but it's a never-ending discussion. Finding an operating system or like in this talk how to find a programming language which makes me productive and we will talk about what it means to be productive in the field of technical computing. So learning languages, uh, languages should always be, or which would be nice if they're easy to learn. So the amount of time I spend is not too big before I can actually get started because we want to be productive and we do not like want to just learn something, but we want to be able to use it as a tool. Of course, you should see, is it used in industry? Do we have the ecosystem? How's the community? Like today, I see lots of very nice faces. So I think the community gets a big thumbs up. And uh, do you have like the culture? And this counts for both languages, which are spoken and programming languages. And here I also have like a small uh, thing again. So you see almost all of the criteria which we want to have like for be able to speak a language or program a language of the same, such as writing, expressing yourself, discussing and solving complex problems. So programming languages and spoken language are actually not that different. Um, when we want to decide which language we want to learn, we should uh, check all of the aforementioned criteria and uh, see that we have good tools. So. Here I put some of the criteria in like single words and in the next step I have defined variables, rated different programming languages, gave them all some kind of number which is completely unscientific because it's in my own opinion but there will be a survey and you should be able to tell me if you disagree and what is important and what is not and for that please go to the repository at the end. So uh, let's get more into the code. There's a library 
called jump and it's easy for formulating mathematical optimization problems and uh, it's used in many different fields such as inventory, scheduling, power grids, routing, telecoms and much more or choosing the correct programming language like we will do today. <laughs> so um, we all know Pluto, it's great. You will have the task if you want to like have the, sort of the homework of copying these things from the slides. Uh, the slides are linked so you can also copy and paste it and uh, work along, follow it, maybe you send me some ideas later. Also, um, this is my rating of different programming languages like we have Julia, Python, RC, Rust, Wolfram, Octave and Haskell and the speed, ease of use, reprodu reproducibility, learning curve, development time, composability, how good is it for machine learning, what is the scientific domains, parallel computing, plotting, data, visual visual data visualization and data science. So all of these numbers I made up and they're my, in my humble opinion, if you have different experiences, tell me, we will try to make it more scientific. I think speed is the only halfway scientific thing because I use the uh, Julia micro benchmarks from the Julia website and they have, have quite an extensive uh, benchmark like ease of use was me trying to remember how easy it was to like get started in the language so those are like how I came up with these numbers and I asked you the community let's improve this let's make it more scientific and let's make an interactive Pluto notebook with sliders and different things so we can show it to our pointy haired boss who doesn't want any changes <laughs> to his existing stuff. So um, we will now define a mathematical optimization problem. This is with less constraints what we call a knapsack problem. So we have like a backpack and we have here the constraint we only want to use one language and not be in the two language problem. So the constraint here is you can only choose one language. Uh, in the next part, which is your homework, there will be weights assigned to different criteria. So maybe you want to be easy or fast or ecosystem is more important. So I've already commented out the beginning of that, of how you should implement that. And if you manage to do it, you can then also have more functions in this notebook. Then we have variables, which is just for every programming language, create a variable. The constraint is just one, and now we look at speed, ease of use, and science expressions. I'm sorry, this is, I think, the most complicated code slide. There's a bit too much information, but at the end, we get like, we want to have the best language for the objective function of speed, ease of use, and scientific domain. This is uh, the equation which, our, which we're trying to solve. So whatever has the biggest value for all of this is the programming language we choose. Um, we are using a multi-objective algorithm for solving a mathematical optimization problem with different objectives. So let's recap again. The objectives are, I want to be fast, it should be easy to write, and it should have good scientific domains. And uh, now I remind you of the t t title of this presentation, which is, the answer is Julia, and here is the question. <laughs> So, and uh, we see Jump uh, has found a solution, like it's feasible, there's exactly one solution, and uh, the solution is Julia. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yes, um, this is also the next slide, because I made this optimization problem easier, and you have the task of adding weights and different stuff, Julia will always win the way how I formulated the data. So never trust a statistic, my statistics, but let's work on this, let's make the data better, and um, let's, for example, make these weights where we say this criteria is more important than this criteria, or we change like one constraint that you can now choose two languages and then we will see will Python and C win or will it be Python and Rust? Will we still stay with Julia? Who knows? We will see. I think it's very good that Julia has the option to have very many foreign code interfaces. So if you have existing code or tooling, it's fairly easy to call like Python, C, Rust and other languages from Julia. And uh, here's again the thing, 
I have homework also for you, for us as a community. Julia has a very nice community and I must say my thesis, I'm very happy about the ecosystem. I was, when I started researching, looking different videos from Julia Khan, Khan in the summer and from the last years, found exactly the right open source software libraries which I needed for design circuits and circuit optimization and optimizing my problems. And now I'm coming back to say thank you for you and the community for providing everything. And uh, if we want to also improve, want to have better data, let's collaborate on making this notebook even better. My vision is that we will be hosting it later. Any, anybody who's interested, like in what programming language will, should I learn, can find this notebook. Say what is their, their criteria for the diff or their weights or their preferences for different criteria and that we will then be able to convince them to join us programming more Julia and being productive. Because productive, it says in the slides, but I skipped it a bit, means that we get our technical computing challenges solved. So we will be able to create better tools and make have a better advancement. So why did Julia win? In my personal opinion, I was very happy using it for my research in my thesis. It has is a high performance languages, so I'm also having different benchmarks and I'm very happy to say that I, in a few months, was able to beat bigger teams who had more money, more teams, um, more people and more time just by using good libraries, good graph libraries, and the good Julia ecosystem, and very friendly community in the Slack. So, now is the time for the discussion. We already have like three minutes left. I would ask you to please ask the questions. I will repeat them. And, of course, three minutes are not enough. Michael and me, after our presentations, will be downstairs, so let's continue the discussion there. And please don't leave, because Michael will be taking on soon. All right, so yeah, we've got a few minutes for questions. Do we have some? Uh, I can definitely already say it was a very entertaining talk. <laughs> I think compare like Can you repeat? The oh yes. So uh, the question was can we use or is Julia a well a good language for data analysis? I would say what Julia doesn't have you can quickly call with Python call. <laughs> exactly. Mhm. Mm yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So uh, what was said by you said um, that you like writing also in R and Julia also supports quickly calling R. So if you have your existing data science and visualization tools in R or Python, it's easy to integrate them from Julia. More questions? Yeah. One last question. Way in the back. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, you don't need to do memory so, wait, management. Uh, so the question was, uh, what's easy about Haskell? And it's my, I had like two years of Haskell in university, but only like two months of C++. And Haskell never had any mem me memory issues, except if you did list concatenation from the wrong direction, and then you just need to think how you want to solve the problem. And I don't like manual memory management, so for me personally, memory management made uh, it harder to use because you shoot yourself after in the foot. But uh, for most problems, I would prefer to use Julia because Haskell has like a very tight domain, which I would try to use it to solve like complex problems where you can do like ADTs and stuff, which Julia can also like quite well do with ML style. So we got the time and thank you for listening. <laughs>